I, I was at this um, antique fair, in inverted commas, uh, wandering around, couldn't find anything, because what, what I collect is pretty thin on the ground. And I went into this room, and then lo and behold, was, there was this, this lass, and um, absolutely amazing. And so I just had to go up to her and just, I just tapped her on the shoulder and said, how fabulous she looked and she thanked me and, and that was it and it played on my mind this sort of um, this, this young lass who was a goth and I, and I thought well I didn't think it would make a good series because I didn't realise the series was there but I just started painting the first one which was a couple and uh, and that, you know, the, the rock set in then. Yeah, until it reached a point where I thought, well, that's it. I've said what I want to say. Rather than all the works disappearing into private collections, which they do quite quickly, especially with such strong work, he decided to keep hold of these and make sure that he was happy with, he'd said everything he wanted to say with this series, and also, um, that he wanted to put a book together and he's produced a beautiful book um, which gave us a chance to see the whole collection which was quite striking when you walked into the, the studio and all these works were there and we decided that we could for only the second time in his career of 64 years put an exhibition on of a complete series so it's quite a special and unique occasion. Sometimes people think that he does a work on paper and then an oil, but not necessarily. Sometimes he's said what he wants to say with an oil and he's really pleased with the image that he goes on to do a work on paper. I mean, the air of sort of goth decadence on that one yeah. is incredible. It's like a cross between uh, Oscar Wilde and Edgar Allan <laughs> Poe in a way. It's just the sheer variety of mood that he manages to get into this collection. They really draw you in, don't they? Yeah. You almost have sat and stood on that road with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the best way to put it. They, they are immersive and yet, and although there is this variety in it, and I think this is such a varied collection, the theme sort of binds them all together. You know they belong together, don't I you? I think that's what's nice to be able to show a full series of work and you can see that almost where his work has moved on. He, he starts with an, an idea and an image that he's seen and puts that into his own handwriting and painting style and then that just evolves and you can see the way that the work has evolved and when he's said what he wanted to say he stops and moves on. He moves on. But it's almost a privilege isn't it to be able to see a collection like this together because as you say this would have been dispersed the four winds instantly and, yeah. and it's only actually when you can see them all together that you get the full power of the, yeah. of, of the pieces. It was very emotional. When you go in, and it just almost took your breath away to see all these really strong works. And um, it's you don't get to see that because as soon as a painting is painted, it's it's sold, it's, it's in a private collection, where it was really nice that this has been able to be kept together and to be able to see by the public. It's amazing when you get all Jeff's work, especially when we do exhibitions and we did the Key Decades exhibition which was great because that went right the way yeah. through his, um, his career and how he evolved with that. But when you see a complete series you can see how he's evolving constantly, even um, at the grand age of 82. Oh, no. He's still pushing boundaries and he's still changing and learning through his, uh, his, his work. Well he is pushing boundaries because anyone who knows his work would come in and look at this and say this is something different. It's recognisable Jeffrey Key but he's, he's stepped on, stepped up to something else. That's what's nice about Jeff, he doesn't stay still, he wants to, he, he knows what sells well, he knows what is greatly received, but he's always doing something different, he's always trying to do something different. He doesn't paint for what everybody wants, he paints for what he wants to put up on the canvas, and that's why he gets such strong work from him. I'm absolutely over the moon with it. But it fits in with everything I've done in the past, the jesters, the clowns, the Commedia dell'arte. People come in here, they look at this, and they, they recognise it's Geoffrey Key, but it's, it's Geoffrey Key at a, a separate level. Yeah, it's sort of, the fiddle's been retuned, you know. <laughs> Thank you.
to be honest, when you, he talked about you're going to paint Gothic, yeah. I thought, you know, it would be a dark and depressed, but it's really beautiful. How uh, can, so far. How can I do? Yeah, yeah I, I know. I, I thought, I knew it would be Jeffrey. Make you, you know, upset, upset in the good way. <laughs> How do you feel now you've managed to put all this together? The thing I've really enjoyed was from going to Jeff's studio on day one to seeing Goth one and watching them evolve in the studio to then they frame, then they're in the exhibition. It's just been an amazing journey. It's just getting better and better and better. And it's incredible, absolutely. Uh, and the, the feedback we've had already, it's just been incredible. I think he's one of the finest books that we've produced uh, between us. And the quality of Jeff's um, paintings actually really shine out on the pages, I think, when you flip through. Especially, I mean, you can see the brush detail, especially in, like, the hair and the finishes of the paint. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And we actually took one of um, Jeffrey's paintings and actually foiled the effect on there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm very, very pleased with it as a design.